guys. Have you ever been working in SolidWorks PDM and you need to convert your engineering bomb or e-bomb to a manufacturing bomb, M-bomb? Well, today's Q-tips for you. We're going to be using the named bomb functionality built straight into SolidWorks PDM and we're going to show you how to use the bomb compare tool and how to set up your PDM workflow to do this. We're going to be covering a lot of material and going pretty fast, so stay tuned. We've got this bill of materials for this pipe rack in our PDM system. And if we go into the pull down list over here, we can see that there is the CAD bomb, which is the bomb that's on the face of the drawing. And then we have the engineering bomb, which is the computed bomb, just the parametrically computed bomb, which is essentially the same as the contains tab. Let's quickly review the workflow. Once the bomb is created, it will drop into the bomb created state. This is where the named bomb is just created. We don't want to do any editing there. We want to send it to the M-bomb build out so that the supply chain buyers can log into PDM and then do the build out of the manufacturing bomb. So we want to go ahead and transition it over to here. We want to go ahead and check this in. Right click on it. Again, this is a document of record so it can now change state. This is a sovereign document inside your PDM vault. This is part of your data package for this specific drawing that needs to go to manufacturing. It's a great way to handle your data in the 21st century. Route it to engineering. You'll notice the state will change from bomb created to in bomb build out. At this point, your notification system would come in handy because you'd be able to notify the supply chain buyers or your production planners that their bomb is ready for them to do the work. They would then come into the system, check it out, and then make changes to it. The changes they can make would be to insert columns or rows as required. Let's say you wanted to insert a column for the customer. They can put that in there. They could right click, insert, column to the right, and then we have a variable for that called customer. It will add this column to the bill of materials for us. Then they could fill this out like, as I add items, each row that I add to or column that I add to that's been affected will change colors for me. So I have a visual representation of what's changed here. Now if we want to add rows, right click on over on the, one of the row headers and we want to add a row above. In this case we need to add some U-bolts, some Loctite thread locker, and we need to add some tamper evident plugs because this is a pipe rack it needs to have these components added during the manufacturing process, not during engineering. They don't need to be modeled items. Manufacturing cares about this because part of the manufacturing process is to add these during manufacturing before we ship them to the client. Let's open up McMaster car. And then from here, we would add all of these components. We're going to add these U-bolts, the thread locker, and then the plugs. For time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and add these while I pause the video, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've added the manufacturing items to the list. Let's go ahead and check this in. I do want to save the changes, and then I would just check it in with a comment. From here, then I would send this to the next stage in the workflow, which is to do the review. Right click, change state, submit bomb to the review team. And it looks like just a regular transition box. Again, if you have notifications set up at this point, the review team would then receive the notification. They would get into the system and be able to review the MBOM. Let's say that the reviewers determined that tamper evident plugs on line item one don't need to be added. So we will go ahead and return to engineering for changes. They would get that notification back. They would then check out the bomb, right click on the row and delete. That row has been deleted but it's part of the version history because we actually have, again, a document of record as a data package. There's no drawing with it. There's no spreadsheet with it. This is just your document of record in your system. When this releases to supply chain, it will release to the ERP system, and then all the work downstream can then happen. We're going to check it in. Then the comment is added to the history. Again, as a document of record, it has its own history. It has its own audit trail with all the comments that have been added as we move this through its workflow. Let's go ahead and send it back to the review team. Review and release. Now as a reviewer, I need to verify that the changes that I requested in the notification last time were actually changed. So then I would use the bomb compare tool. Inside PDM, this is just built in out of the box functionality we have the ability to see the changes using the bomb compare tool. 
Currently, this bomb has three versions to it, and they're all included in the history. If I want to compare, then I would use this tool here, Compare Bills and Materials. The first version that I'm comparing with is version 3, the latest version. It's comparing it with version 2, where the M-bomb parts were added. So then these two were added, these are green, these are new, and then if you slide to the bottom, the ones that were removed are down below. We compare version 3, and we then select version 1 because we want to determine what all has been added since the beginning. We can see this column has been added because it's all green. We've got a legend down here, new, modified, and deleted. And then these have been added because these are green. Well, that's the differences between version 3 and version 1. If we look at version 2, where M-bomb parts were added, you'll see it's a little bit different. We've got the new columns that were added here. And then down below, these were the ones that show up as deleted. A little bit confused on this because I don't understand why it is that these show up as deleted even though they were added. But between version 3 and 2, they weren't deleted. I'm wondering if that's a little bit of a bug, but if anybody has any insight on this, I'd like to learn about it. But this is the way that the tool works. So it shows up that the tamper evident plugs have been removed. And then up here, we show that these have been added new. Then we're done with the comparison and we click close. At this point, we would then right click on it, change state, and release the bomb to the supply chain, to supply chain so that the bomb can be exported to XML to the ERP or MRP system or other business systems downstream. Release to manufacturing. And at this point, the production planners or the supply chain buyers are the ones doing this release, not engineering, because it's no longer an engineering bomb. It's a manufacturing bomb that's now been sanitized and ready to release to our manufacturing processes. We click OK. The state changes from the packages in review to the release bomb, and now the XML is being exported out on the server. Guys, I hope that today's Q-tip has been helpful for you. We've covered a lot of ground really fast. Let us know what you think about this. This is a great way to handle your manufacturing processes and taking PDM to that next level by using a named bomb, using the bomb compare tool. Hope this has been helpful for you. Believe in the cube.